consider yourself normal then this is not the show for you please go somewhere else this is wyrd if it's getting weird it's got to be the weird mountain gals show you're listening to byron and alicia the weird mountain gals like it because it's small for one thing um and it's got like 18 devices in it no joke i'm not kidding um it's got a convection oven so it uses a lot less energy in it and it works faster if you want it to mm-hmm. it's it's you can digitally control it down to the second or or to the degree that you want and the time uh-huh. you can dual set it so that if you have something you want it to cook at 350 for 30 minutes and then uh, broil the top or something uh, for three minutes to get a crust on it, you, it'll do, it'll work like that. You don't have to bother with it. It's got an air fryer, which that's I'm happy about because I don't like fried food, but people that I eat with love it. <laughs> so, so, you know, I can do some things that are going to be healthier than dipping it in grease. Um, and it's got a an oven. I can bake with it. I can toast with it. Um, it's got a food dehydrator. You can do proofing with it if you do that. Um, it it it's got a, a steamer on on it. Oh yeah, and it's got a rotisserie. And it's it's small. <laughs> wow, it, that sounds amazing. It is. It is, and it's got across the horizontally across the top it's got these presets already for 18 or 19 or 20 different uh types of food 
So if you want to do, say, steamed green beans or something, you click steam vegetables. And if it has any questions for you, that's where you would answer it, I guess. I don't know. I haven't done that yet. I literally haven't used it. Today, This I got it ready. You have to you heat everything up for 18 minutes in case there's anything from the factory that needs to be cooked out of it. So you put it on the high setting for 18 minutes. I did it or uh, outside so that if there were any fumes, I wouldn't have to breathe them in. Oh, and, that was smart. Uh, yeah, and then I brought it in. And, you know, honestly, it's smaller than our microwave. Huh. Yeah, and it will cook a 13-inch pizza. And it'll do a whole chicken. You can roast things. I mean, it's cool. And it was so cheap that even I wouldn't turn it down. Let's see. Because you know how cheap I am. But um, um, I know that you are frugal. <laughs> I'm not going to um, say you're cheap. <laughs> well, okay. But I said it. Um, so what I did is I took advantage of some discounts. And I ended up getting it for under $100, if you can believe wow. that. Yeah. And really, because of my gift cards, they were given to me for Christmas. It didn't cost me anything. So that's well, how lucky I am. That. You are lucky. I am, and I know it. I'm real lucky. But I've wanted one of those for a number of years, ever since I knew that they existed, because, because ovens to me, seem like they use a, just, they waste a lot of electricity, a lot of power, and they heat the environment, which sometimes you want that, but mostly I usually don't. And yeah. um, so I, I I think about it all the time. When I'm in a hot kitchen, I even when I'm not in a hot kitchen, I'll think about what people used to have to go through to, to cook and how they would move their cooking outdoors in the summer. Because you oh, wouldn't yeah. be able summer to stay kitchen. I'd, I'd love to build a summer kitchen. Wouldn't that be great? Mm -hmm. Byron, if we ever truly retire, let's let's think about that project. That would well, be wonderful. I, I got a um a wood burning stove, a cook stove mm -hmm. that I, I bought years ago, pre COVID. It's in yeah. the basement of this house right now. But it's not well, assembled, it's gonna be cleaned and assembled. Yeah. I think I remember you telling me about that. I yeah. think. But anyway, so um I'm looking forward to many gourmet meals from this thing. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> um and which segues back to your trip. How was the oh. food? What did you eat? Oh, you know, I'm just not there are things that I don't eat because I shouldn't like high carb food. Mm -hmm. So uh, I mostly ate about what I usually eat. I'd eat some, I, I tried to get as much fish and seafood as I could. Um, I got some fish and chips one time and the way the fish had been fried, it was easy to pull the breading off of it and just eat the fish ah. and the fish was so fresh. Oh. So delicious. How was the beer? More I probably ate more French fries, chips, than I eat in a year at home. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, but you were I drank active, a lot weren't you? Of, drank a lot of cider and a lot of beer. But also, we were we were walking. I bet we walked 10, 15 miles a day. Yeah. So I didn't worry too much about extra carbs. But, you know, I didn't yeah. eat pasta and rice and all that stuff. I, I don't eat at home. Uh, so the food was good. We ate out in a lot of restaurants. And then once we got settled into our place at Mara Zion, we had a big kitchen and, and Paula was a good cook. So oh, he did a lot of okay. cooking for us. Nice. Nice. Well, um, how was the beer? It was great. It was better than here. <laughs> yeah. And I, did, I didn't I didn't drink more than a pint Every other day, I guess. I drank a lot of cider, hard cider. Because uh, yeah, so it was good. I didn't I didn't starve. I had a full English breakfast a couple times. I uh, had oatmeal once, which is what I normally have for breakfast. And mostly I would just have toast with some marmalade and tea. 
that was nice. good and yeah so it was it was good it was it was good I mean it wasn't fancy but it was good and so tell me do you drink PNG tips over there do you know here's here's what's so funny so we arrive at this uh uh Airbnb place that we're staying in and they we were already surprised supplied with some bread and scones and you know some other eggs some other things that were there and there were a few uh little tea bags in a in a tea canister but we drank those up pretty fast and the next day we were going to go to the grocery store we went to the Tesco and i said well i'm just i'm just going to get tea and i don't remember who i was standing with and they were well let's get this well let's get that and i said we are getting pg tips and if you don't like pg tips then you better get you something that ain't pg tips and they said well <laughs> i've never had that what is it and i said it is the quintessential english tea and that's what we're getting a box of pg tips so i fly thousands of miles away just to go to the grocery store and buy a box of pg tips well uh, you know what you like. I do. And yeah, there are other teas like I love Yorkshire Gold and Yorkshire Red. And those are good, too. But for the value, you can't beat PG Tips. I don't think. Everybody's got a new one. Some people like Twinings better. Some people like this. But for me, PG Tips. I've never had the Yorkshire Red or Gold. Now, I remember that's good. when I was a child, or when I was when I first started going to Disney World with bands and stuff was when I was a child. Okay. And we would go and at some point we'd have a some time to get out and be on our own. And my parents, one of them would always usually be there. And we didn't have a lot of money. Um I remember though that I would buy these tiny little tins. And I, when I say small, I'd say they're probably two ounces if that of teas because they had teas from all around the world in Aww. some section there in disney so that i kind of would collect those tins i love the colors and the way they looked and in the process i got to drink all these kinds of tea so like oh, i would have yeah. never tried gunpowder tea have you that ever had it then. yeah it's good yeah. it's it's, it's, it's a different one yeah it's yeah. different Lapsang Su Chong, I would never have had that. And I would no. drink the Ceylon tea. Uh -huh. um, I like that a lot and the jasmine tea and all that stuff. And so I, I've I've had a lot of tea and I've, there's a lot of tea that, how do I say this, that is just, um, I, I can't hardly stomach it. <laughs> they know how to do tea in Britain. There's just in no Britain, question, yeah. but on the way over, they fed us a meal, and then when we were almost there, they came by with a little trolley um, for just, you know, you could get something to drink and a snack or something. And I, I said, I'd like tea with some milk in it. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. And it was possibly the worst cup of tea I've ever had in my whole life. Oh, my. But wow. I drank it. But I drank it because, you know, somebody gave it to me, so I drank. And the reason it was so bad is that they had probably – put the tea water through the same heater device that they did for the coffee. So it oh. had that kind of vaguely coffee, tea, yuck, mud flavor. Yeah. Uh, and I thought, I just laughed and I said, I can't believe I'm heading to Great Britain and I have the worst cup of tea I've ever had. <laughs> but, you know, if that's the worst thing that happened to me on that trip, I, that's good. That's all good. That's, it's a monumental trip. This is one of those things where you'll say, uh, this is where I was when I heard that. Uh, oh, that's true. Uh, that's very true. Uh, it's a monumental. Tr a lot of things, very important things, happened in the last ten days or so. And oh, I was, I was on are we, talk, are we ready to talk about JD Vance yet? Because um, yeah. I got some stuff to say about him. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I ain't got nothing positive to say. Let's be clear. I've despised that man since his book came out. Um, but what I have enjoyed in the past few days uh, that has now turned to kind of a jaundiced eye, I guess, is all of the funny memes about how he's not Appalachian. 
Yeah. Now, in my in my world, in my Appalachian world, which is not the same as everybody's Appalachian world, because Appalachia is not a monolith. You <laughs> are from you are from where your grandma's from. Yeah. So I don't know where his grandma's from, but you know, but in that sense, he is in fact Appalachian. So I'm he not claimed fuss Kentucky. About that. He claimed Pardon? Kentucky. <laughs> claimed his grandparents were uh, from Kentucky. Kentucky. All right. Well, I, Eastern Kentucky is certainly Appalachia. Anyway, so I've been enjoying some of those memes, like J.D. Vance puts his cast iron skillet in the dishwasher. J.D. Vance doesn't know how to make leather britches. J.D. Vance. So all that stuff that is kind of <laughs> quintessentially Appalachian uh, stereotypes. Yeah. So all of that coming out. I think I posted one today that is um, uh, Zoolander. You remember those movies? Yeah. Like Zoolander. And I he's got on some, some fancy runway outfit and he's pulling a um, pulling a wheeled suitcase and it says J.D. Vance visits Appalachia. So I've enjoyed, oh, I've, yeah, I've enjoyed so many of those. But what I'm noticing now, because that is getting old, it's, it's getting tired in internet world, is that now it's easy to just skip past the J.D. Vance part and say Appalachia. So so we've poked fun at J.D. Vance and now it's starting to ease over into all the people from Appalachia. And that yeah. is what happens when you play on a stereotype like that. So now I'm hearing, well, I, I was not, I don't know what kind of emotion I had, but I noticed the people who would say, you know, there's the hashtag Andy Bashir had said, he, he ain't from around here. And then there's the hashtag, he ain't from around here. And a whole lot of people that were posting that in my socials also ain't from around here. Yeah, so it's gone from being something that felt like Appalachian solidarity mm -hmm. to people outside of Appalachian making judgment on who is and who is not Appalachian. Yeah, and <laughs> there was a there was a thing today about some uh, he was a governor I think of a state not Appalachian, and he was saying you know, the problem is 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 your Appalachian cousins that didn't go to Yale, but they still contributed to the community and they lived good lives and whatever. And I, I came into the conversation that was happening all, on all that. And I said, let us not forget that some of our Appalachian cousins did in fact go to Yale and that's no shame on them. So don't try to pigeonhole us as people that are lightly educated because that yeah. is not true for most of us. Yeah. So it's so easy to just kind of flip right over into, well, you know how those Appalachian people are. I mean, look at J.D. Vance. And Appalachia has already said, we don't claim it. He, he ain't one of us. Now, whether he's from around here or not, but he ain't one of us because he has sold his birthright for a mess of pottage. And that's yeah. the truth of it. Well, he's carpet. They call him a carpet bagger. He's a cultural strip miner of the worst sort. Mm -hmm. the the problem that i have right now with him is i've made it a point to not watch or read his stuff okay because i've heard enough about him to know that it would poison my mind probably uh i, I just am not going to do that and so i don't know that the way that he thinks you know people who write you can kind of pick that up from them if they write for themselves that is and it's, but the things that I've learned about him are deplorable and yes. you know but I also for whatever reason I don't really think he's going to be around I, I think that probably Trump will drop it well they because say Trump is having that Trump's having buyer's remorse about him well I think he'll drop it uh, one way or I, I do, for some reason, you know, I mean, he's a, and I think probably Nikki Haley is on his short list. Wow. That'd be a surprise if he did that, I think. He well, should be, because she's smart as a damn whip, but. Yeah. Oh, but that, to me, ahead. you know, uh, there's a, there's a group of people that were Nikki Haley uh, voters that it, it instantly moved to Kamala. But yeah. if Nikki Haley yeah. was back in it in any way, 
they would come on back, you see, and that would be a big signal to some other groups too. So, you know, that would be the smartest thing he could do. And he is smart like a fox sometimes. Well, and when it maybe serves him. Advisors, right? Yeah, yeah. When it serves him. And so that's, that's kind of what I'm expecting. J- J.D. Vance has been a, a terrible choice for him. Although in his mind, J.D. Vance is the one because he's a good looking younger man and that's important to him. And uh, also he'll, you know, kiss butt. He will do whatever, you know, he'll he'll do whatever Trump wants it to. I mean, he will, so. He will. And what about our governor being on the short list for Kamala Harris? Yeah, that's very fine. Nice. The thing that I've liked the most about these last few consequential days is seeing people laughing again about yeah. about so about politics it's been it's been long hard years at this point and so to watch them kind of to watch people turn around and go well maybe maybe you know that's nice it is nice it's that's very nice. nice and and it's also been really bittersweet uh, watching Joe Biden say goodbye. That's what I'm going to say about that. It's been, um, I mean, I have never been a Biden fan. Right. Um, and of course, I supported him because he's the president and he's and been look at the alternative. alternative and all of that. And I think he and his team have done an excellent job. I'm not going <clears> to <throat> take any of that away from him. Yeah. We're in but just on a human, we were. What? just in a human place. That was a, a a selfless act. Well, I mean, it was if it was selfless, unless he was bullied into it, by or the unless he really is got the cognitive decline to the point that he recognizes it, or everybody recognizes it, or something. You know? Yeah. I mean, it could be it could be that, but it he he's bowing out with a little bit of dignity left and yep. and a little bit of class. And I really enjoy watching him support his vice president, watching his vice president support him. I mean, it's better than trying to have him have your vice president hanged, you know? Oh gosh. Yes. You, you know, it's nice to see and specifically. It's nice to see the handoff the, yes. the of power or whatever. The handoff. Yeah, and, I think so too. Yeah, and, and so that's been good. The memes have been good. Um, <clears throat> watching people have a little hope has been great. Gosh, has watching it? the it has watching the level of organization that has gone into this is astonishing. What a team they must have. On both sides, really. Yeah, that's what when I, I was. Too. I was looking at it. the The scope of the messaging—that's what it is. It's the messaging and the scope of it is crazy. So, how do you get all the senators to talk about the same thing? How do you get all the congressmen to talk about the same talking point? Both sides are good at doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, and you watch it ripple through the media. It's like you can almost guess what the next story is going to be because yeah, of it. It's going to be some stupid crap that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just done with the damn mainstream media, and I never thought I'd say that. I've not been one of those people that's by the mainstream media is going to lie to you. You can only go on the dark web and find the real information, blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, the stuff they have avoided mm-hmm. covering has been yeah. shocking. It has shocked me. Well, it's I I hate it, and I, I've 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 felt that it was around for a long time. Things where the media manipulates our thoughts in profound ways. Profound say, ways. Say more about that. Well, everything from color schemes to, I mean, you may or may not notice 
what color scheme is going on, but it'll be the trend. And look at this, uh, say, this woman who said, Kamala's brat. Okay. It's rippled everywhere, and now there's that a color that goes with it. Kamala's brat, B-R-A-T. Well, what is that? Ev I guess it means she's cool. I really haven't looked into it. But, oh, but it was able to... What it did is it communicated to those super young people who know that that code word and yeah. and that color came around and it's just, you know, boom. Now these people have been influenced, you see, and people like you and I are talking about it. So it's going to keep going and keep going and they plan this stuff. I know they do. I'm sure of it. I mean, they plan this stuff. Uh, when When you see a senator being interviewed oh no let's say a congressman being interviewed about an issue and suddenly they're bringing up another issue and then if you if you look into it there might be two or three other interviews that day from people on the same side congressmen or senators or whoever that might have something to do politically with the issue that was brought up and guess what they're going to bring up the same talking point yeah oh yeah and the next thing you know you have been subtly influenced you might not have even thought of that. And now it comes into your mind whether you're wanting to think about it or not. You see, you and, and sooner or later, you begin to take it as a fact. If you hear it often enough, you'll start to think it's your own thought. That's a method of influencing people. I took that class at Ashwabunkum Technical College in 1979. The brain it, brainwashing. Yeah. It, we don't talk about is, that word anymore, do well, we? It, no. Because what's the point? You know, I mean, think about George Orwell knew when he wrote 1984 back in the boy. When did he write that? In the 50s? maybe. I don't know when yeah. he wrote it. I could ask my device and it would tell me. I wouldn't even have to think then. No, you could just <laughs> say her name. And I've been listening to this guy named, I think his name is Drew Lynch. And he is, he has a stutter. Oh. Have I already told you about this guy? No. He's a, he's a medium, but he's also kind of a bit of a pundit on the side. But he's got a stutter and he's married to a woman who has ADHD. Uh -huh. he's, so he's he kind of, in one of his first bits there, he talks about coming home from work one day all stressed out. And his wife asked him, his ADHD wife asked him, well, what's going on? And he said he tried to tell her, I'm, I'm, st I'm stressed. And he was going, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, stuck, stuck. And he was doing it. And he's, and then he said, and his wife, she just started dancing to it. <laughs> and she was like, sick beat, honey. <laughs> you know, and the way he told it, it was funny. I was like, okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, he he can be, you know, and the one that I really like lately because I don't have to think about politics. His name is Matt Mitchell. Have you heard of him? No, I haven't. He's a uh, he's just a just a fella out there on the internet. He's a comedian, a professional comedian, and uh, he he keeps the content fresh. You know, and so he's part of my winding down process in the evening because I'm trying not to play games or engage my mind too much uh, because I know I won't get any sleep if I do. So sure. I'll, I'll start. I kind of ease my way into a, a stupor by watching stupid shit on YouTube, I guess is what it is. But I watch Matt Mitchell and, and I'll laugh. Uh, it's kind of my equivalent of uh, watching funny animal videos. Uh, what what you don't want to do is go down a rabbit hole right before you should go to sleep. Right, and exactly. It's, it's not healthy to have screens on and try and sleep, even though a lot of people have to. And I have occasionally done it. They they have these uh, they have these beats by gnarl beats or tones or whatever you want to call them uh that will blacken your screen but you'll still hear the sound so oh. if, if you fall asleep you can fall asleep to the sound of a fan 
or the sound of the ocean or the sound of rain uh, or the sound of the forest or whatever does it for you. And it'll blacken the screen. That's that's an interesting thing if you have chronic sleep problems. Yeah. But, but you know what? I still, I don't know, I still think that if you can get away with not having the device on at all, I, I feel like it's it's an even better sleep. Well, you know? it's just, I mean, it sounds funny to me that you turn on your device when you could just turn on a fan. Yeah, well, that's what I do. What <laughs> me I do. too, me too. Uh, and the other night, I it was funny because I had a rain sound on and I had it set for eight hours so that hopefully I could sleep and, and it kind of drowns out other sounds. And then I realized I could, I was hearing it rain for real. So I turned that off and I went to sleep right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I've yeah. been falling asleep for a week now with the sound of the ocean because we would oh. have the win windows open and yeah. you could hear the hear the ocean slapping against the shore. Oh it wow! Was great. And it that never got be. dark, dark. So it was, you know, it was nice, frankly, to be home last night when I was n not so tired, so I could be cognizant, I guess. And yeah, and it got dark. It got dark, and I had the fan on, and yeah, I missed the ocean sound, but I had other sounds. It was good. Yeah, it is. Well, I've I've been up and down with the sleep thing. I've been doing much better lately with the sleep thing. Um, you know, I've learned how to kind of extend my hours of, of quality sleep. So I'm feeling a lot better. Um, and that's good. And let me think, what else? Yeah, now you you got all my news. We just haven't had much going on. I got in Facebook jail and I bought a thing. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I that surprised me about the Facebook jail. Golly, yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yeah, but that that's just one more, one more nail in the coffin, as they say, between me and and AI and my imaginary robot companion. I even had a T-shirt that said that. I Aww. said this was yeah. I said this was supposed to be the future. Where's my where's my jetpack? Where's my robotic companion? Where's my flying house? Where's my meal in pill form? And where's my cure for this disease? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it said. That's what yeah. my t-shirt said. <laughs> so so I anyway, I need to not get on off on on that. So when I used to occasionally fly, and I've never flown on a long trip like you just did, uh -huh. and, but but I know that I would have a problem sometimes with my ankles getting swollen if uh -huh. I if I sat too long in a plane without putting my feet up. Have you ever heard of that? Well, yeah, I think a lot of people do have that problem. Uh, I've just been, I guess, a lucky. I, I wiggle my feet the whole time and I stretch my legs out as much as I can. Okay. Um, so I don't, I mean, they may get a little bit swollen, but I, I've never noticed it being terrible. See, that's another good travel tip though. Cause I bet a lot of people don't know that to, I didn't, I never thought about that wiggling your feet the whole time. Seems yeah, like a pain, I mean, but you know, if it'll keep that from happening. Well, I stretch my legs too. I mean, I, I can do it. Uh, it's easier for me because I got short legs. You know, if too. you're a if you're a tall person, it's gonna be harder. Yeah, I imagine. But uh, yeah, I can stick my feet under the seat in front of me as long as my my bags aren't blocking it. Yeah. I can wiggle. You know how you stretch your calf by toes going up towards the front of your foot and then back. Yeah, I do that yeah. a lot when I'm sitting down in the on the plane and and I stand up sometimes and move around I mean usually when I'm going there I'm it's a overnight flight that yeah that's good yeah so well, I just sleep are you masking did they allow I did. you to mask okay allow me yeah I'm a well there's American. some 
Oh my God, no, God there's some places that are You're not allowing you to. Oh, I rant, rant and rave about that. I'm a <laughs> I'm American citizen. They ain't gonna tell me what I can and can't do. I'm <laughs> American airline. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. yes, I did I'm not. Glad. I did not mask in the airport because it's a big enough and open enough space. I didn't feel like I needed to. Yeah, I definitely put the mask on on all the flights. Smart, smart. It's going around again. My buddy uh, and his wife have got it for the fourth time. They came oh, up. Oh, no. Yep, yep. Now, it's changed, you know. It's, it's for the most part, it has mellowed out. You, you oh. They still have the same risk feature factors as before, but uh, people who are getting it, some people are just thinking they've got a severe cold or a sinus infection or whatever, whatever. Uh -huh. um, and that's a growing number of people, but there are, you still should be careful, you know, because I, I don't know what all variants are out there with it. You might get the severe one. You might not. I, I just don't know that much about it. So, and I don't know what people are going to do about vaccines this year. I haven't heard. Isn't that interesting how we're not talking about that? Yeah. yeah. I haven't heard. So, Very interesting. Yeah, it is. Well, but, here's where I I also did, because I'm on be on my soapbox about herbal remedies. Before I went on that trip, I bulked up with echinacea, with fire cider, and with elderberry tincture. Oh, when dear. I got home yesterday morning, I I took elderberry tincture, fire cider. So I am taking those morning and evening for about a week, 10 days, and we'll see. So you might knock anything out that might have got in. Let me ask you a question. Sure. And, and this this is a very basic question, and I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but I don't know that folks listening to us would all know the answer. When you sip on the fire cider, what is the point of fire cider? What well, does it do? It's got it's, a lot. It's it's heavy with uh, minerals and different vitamins because it's a whole bunch of different vegetables and some fruits. So it's got that. It is hot, hot, hot as a firecracker. So what it does for me, what I use it for, it opens up my bronchial airways. It opens up my sinuses. It opens up, coats my throat and opens that up. So it does all of that. That's why I recommended to people because I didn't know during COVID, it seemed like the herbal herbalist community, medicinal herbal community was kind of split. And they, some of them said no elderberry tincture because it will bring on the uh, cytokine storm. Mm -hmm. And others said, we, we doctor elder, we use doctor, we use elderberry to doctor SARS viruses all the time. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, you know, I wasn't going to recommend either way. So if you well, felt I, like you were going to do elderberry, then you try that and see if that works, I guess. But I told people, fire cider, as long as you're not allergic to any of the ingredients, and if you are allergic to some of them, you can probably just leave them out, that it was a good way to take care of some symptoms. And I've also fire. heard that it was good to kick your immune system. and But like you... I don't know if it would trigger something on me. Yeah, I, in, you, you mean the fire cider or the elderberry tincture? The fire cider. Well, maybe. I mean, it might do that, but I reliably use echinacea to, to kick up my immune system. That's what I've always used, echinacea. Okay. Okay. I, I was just curious about it because I'm making some decisions and learning some things. You know, about this MCAS. By the way, I want to tell you, I saw Mindy uh, yesterday. How's she doing? And I, I, she, and I told her this. I said, you're the healthiest looking sick person I've ever seen. Uh, good for her. Yeah. And it's the truth. She, she looked healthy. And I could tell, you know, that things have changed with her. But she finished her last round of chemo and radiation. And she had a month in between the last round and when they're going to kind of give her next CAT scan and see what's there. 
Mm -hmm. So she had the most severe kind of cancer, as you know. Her surgical scar was impressive, to say the least. But uh, oh. she is she started on for that month. She has gone kind of full bore with her herbal things, her herbal rent, all the the things she's learned about enzymes, and she learned about the therapy that her mother had, and because her mother had the same kind of cancer, etc. She's got a I guess August first week of August is the CAT scan time, but she actually looks and sounds phenomenal. She said there was a point with the chemo where she was so sick that she thought, well, I'm going to lay here and die, you know, and, but she got through it. She's tough. Her That's good. That's good to hear. And I think she's really wise in between finishing up a session and getting the CAT scan to do everything she can for her body. Yeah. To remind yep. it that she, you know, she's real sorry she had to poison it for so long. But yep. now let's figure out what we can do to to he, he, health healthy you up a little bit. She's yeah. she's she's the one who brought the vegetables and she's got the chickens and so I got some eggs and nice. you know it's like this is this is her. She's so God, I just adore her. Anyway, and she's always been intelligent and smarter than the average bear when it comes to issues of wellness and she's been open-minded i think that that's that's really that's served super her. important yeah yep that's how well that's how you are about things you listen i mean you'll make your mind up on your own but uh if somebody has something that's different that you haven't thought about yet you'll hear them out oh heck know. yeah and i, you I will it. too so anyway that's it we have been talking for an hour and what 40 minutes well young and we've talked about just about everything today and y'all yeah. we we keep threatening to do uh come visit the weirdlings on their page and we Leisha, you and i need to organize that let's do so it so we can we can see their little faces maybe have supper with them one night that'd be nice i'd love that me too i, I would yeah if you want to, let's check your schedule and let's see what it looks like for you on, say, Wednesday night. Wednesday oh, nights sounds... are generally pretty good unless I'm doing a dark moon or full moon. So, yeah. Okay. Sounds All good. All right, let's tentatively plan for Wednesday night. We'll have supper. And, yeah. Weird, uh, weirdlings, yeah. y'all hearing this? Weirdlings, yeah. are you hearing gonna... it? <laughs> and we can either, we can do it facebook live if you want or we can zoom it whichever we'll talk about it and figure it out and make yeah, it happen that sounds good y'all thanks so much for listening to us today was a long one we had a lot of stuff to say i appreciate everybody putting up with my rants mine too <laughs> yeah yeah and you putting right. up with them and i'll talk you, to you soon you too. talk I'm to you soon go Love you. and make i'm gonna go make gingerbread well, that sounds wonderful. I'm going to go to the grocery store and get myself some almond milk because I'm out. And then I, I hadn't even thought about supper. I have a makings for a pot of soup over here, chicken soup. So I may just have soup. I made a scrambled egg sandwich for breakfast that I Ooh, kept yeah. for myself for this evening. So that's what I'm going to There you go. That's, that's, that's good enough. Yep. All right. Y'all right. be good. Bye. Yep. Bye. And bye. 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 Yeah, bye. Hey, thank you for spending your time with us here at Weird Mountain Gals. We sure do appreciate it. You know, I know time is the most important thing we have, so I promise that if you take your time to listen to us, we'll take our time to continue to be weird. Many thanks to Sunslice Records for all the help. We couldn't do it without you, Craig. Check out our social media for information, community, or a few laughs. W-Y-R-D Mountain Gals. <laughs>